Peter Schiff. <laughs> you may know him from YouTube fame as videos of Peter Schiff calling the markets collapse way back in 2006. I've been making the rounds out there in cyberspace. Turns out he was right on the money. Here he was on CNBC way back in February of 2007. Aren't you looking at the glut of houses on the market for sale with no buyers and the, and the collapse in the subprime market? We're on the verge of a major, major recession that's probably going to start by the end of this year, maybe early next year. The housing market is just beginning to unravel. We're seeing the tip of the iceberg here. And that clip was from before the initial signs of the subprime crisis in the summer of 07 and the record highs of October of 07. Peter Schiff is the president of Euro Pacific Capital. He is the author of The Little Book of Bull Moves and Bear Markets. He is here tonight in his Fast Money debut. Peter, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me here. What do you make of what we saw today? Is this sort of the capitulation that we've been waiting for in this market that you, you know, called for? Capitulation is probably the most overutilized word on CNBC. I've heard it every day for months. I think capitulation, if we get it, is years away. Uh, so don't be looking for it. What is the worst case scenario for our markets then? Our markets are going lower. This is not just a financial crisis. This is an economic collapse. Our entire phony economy is collapsing around us. There's nothing the government can do to stop it. They should get out of the way and let it happen. So other than that, Mr. Lincoln, how did you like the play? <laughs> no, look, you have to Our understand that, look, for the, past, like for the past several years, everybody thought we had a real economy. We didn't. We had a bubble. All we did is borrow trillions of dollars from the rest of the world, and we blew all the money on consumption. We can't pay the bills. The asset bubbles that were inflated by reckless monetary policy are deflating around us, and we're going to have to rebuild a viable economy, and it's not going to be easy. A lot of companies are going to go bankrupt uh, during the process. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs, but this has to happen. We have have to go back to a sane economy where we save our money and actually make stuff. Peter, okay. you've had this cold, absolutely dead on right, but you've liked things and you haven't liked things. Like, for instance, the U.S. dollar, you've been very bearish on. That's had a tremendous move. The bond market, I think you've been bearish on. A tremendous move. Canadian oil sands, I think you like. Even when you're right, which you've been, there have been so many pitfalls. Where would you put your money now? Well, remember, I'm not trying to give short-term advice. And I know that. Right. But I, I think what's happened in commodities and the dollar right now is temporary. It's the result of this massive deleveraging. It's all these U.S. institutions that are having to sell everything they own to settle up their margin debt, to pay their bills. I think temporarily you're seeing these prices get sold off. It's not going to last. I would be taking advantage of these opportunities. I'd be buying these dips in commodities, buying some of these stocks abroad, and getting out of the dollar because it's a bottomless pit. When this dollar stops rallying, it's going to fall like a stone. That is the next major economic crisis we're setting up, a major major run on the dollar, and that's going to have tremendous repercussions for our economy and our markets. You know, Peter, you say we have to get back to an economy where we make things. I mean, that suggests that there can be absolutely no change, evolutionary change, in the way in which economies function, that it's all just about bricks and mortar, no, no. and that there can be no difference. No, remember, we have to pay for our imports. So we like all these consumer products, but how do we pay for them? We can't expect the rest of the world to produce all this stuff, send it to us, and then give them nothing in return. We have to be able to export to pay for our imports. So to say that manufacturing Manufacturing goods is somehow old school. No, it's not. I mean, we need these products. I mean, these are, this is real wealth. We, we manufactured our way into becoming the wealthiest economy in the world, and now we've consumed our way into bankruptcy. But if you create a unified block of capital whereby goods and services flow somewhat freely within it, you know, nothing, every state in the United States doesn't have to make and be self-sufficient. Well, because we're all using the dollar, but we can't expect people in other currencies to do all the heavy lifting. We can't expect the world to do, make all the sacrifices, to do all the savings to do all the production and we just step up and we just you know eat the fruits of their labor it doesn't work like that and the world is finding out that we can't pay back our bills and this phony economy is unraveling but the dollar's working and I'm long the dollar and I'll tell you why for a trade look, because it's better than the look, euro the it's better than those cruddy no, Russians no it's not it's, the rubles look, that's are good. nonsense the Chinese are commies and they, they, no, 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 no. what do you think, what do you think we are relative. what do you look at you look at our, our economic policy look what our government is doing yeah, well, look, pretend to be the, the dollar is rallying for the same reason that, that real estate rallied or the dot coms rallied. It's not because of the fundamentals. It's temporary. You know, you see a lot in the market. Sometimes there's a head fake. You get a news item in the day. You see a move, and then the real move is in the other direction. You got to fade this rally in the dollar. It can't last. It's I, been a tough but, move to fade, though, Peter. And well, listen, you, and I said it before. You've been dead on, but the fading this move has been brutal. Look, you frankly. can't look. You can't do it on leverage, right? It's, this is brutal. But all, once this rally is exhausted, you know, the dollar is going to collapse. Look at the trillions and trillions of dollars being hoarded by foreign central banks. Look. Look at China announcing they want to do the $600 billion stimulus package. How do you think they're going to finance it? They're going to sell treasuries. They're going to stop lending us money. The world has learned a valuable message, and that's don't lend Americans any more money. So is the gold trade alive? Yes. You're the first to admit that gold is
has not participated. You explained it Wait. because of the hedge funds, but gold is clearly not participating. I would disagree. If you look at that, you you thought it was going to. Well, buy. if you look at number, I've been buying it since it was below 300. But Fair if you enough. look at the, if you look at the price of gold right now, it's about 740, 750. It's only off its peak by about 25 percent. It's outperformed almost every other asset in in the world. The Dow Jones is now worth almost 10 ounces of gold. It was worth 15 ounces when the year began. Look at gold relative to all the other industrial commodities. If you look at another currency, is gold just recently hit all-time record highs against the Australian the dollar, the Canadian dollar. I've been long the, the dollar, and I haven't had a position in gold since August. And so now what I know for sure is that I could actually trade and buy more gold now with in that dollars. dollars. Yeah, but if you well, look I can buy whatever I want. What I'm saying is you're allowed to transact on these no, things. And right, but I, my dollar. point is that gold is actually held up better than everything else but the dollar in the yen. You look at it compared to other commodities, compared to other currencies, people have benefited by holding gold relative to other asset classes. But I think ultimately when this dollar rally runs out of steam, and yeah. it's going to fall. Gold's going up. It's going a lot higher. I predicted it would hit 1000 this year. It did. I think next year gold's going to hit $2,000 an ounce and then go higher. Okay, got to leave it there. Peter Schiff, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And, uh,